MF Ghost is the worst thing since West Nile Virus. But at least West Nile Virus can be cured by crushing a lime green Gatorade and watching Ted. Fucking love Ted. MF Ghost is the quote sequel unquote to the most famous Japanese racing manga slash anime. Whoa, whoa, back it up. Oh well, of course, I mean it's not as popular as a Speed Racer because in Speed Racer, uh, Speed has a gun and he kills a million people. A very popular racing manga slash anime called Initial D. Initial D, of course, for the uninitiated, is about a young Japanese boy named Takumi Fujiwara who joins Al Qaeda. Takumi is a young man who gradually comes to learn his dad's tofu restaurant was actually an elaborate scheme to turn him into the greatest street racer of all time. The story follows him as he gradually comes to love his new, exciting, and dangerous hobby and cements himself as one of the most legendary drivers of all time, defeating dozens and dozens of other talented drivers in his mid-80s Toyota Corolla shitbox. Initial D captured the hearts and minds of a generation. The series functioned as a love letter to the iconic 1990s Japanese car scene, with flashy yet affordable and modifiable cars, pop-up headlights, and winding twisty mountain roads, perfect for a new and exciting driving technique known as crashing through a guardrail and dying on impact. Sorry, I meant to say drifting. Thanks to his Eurobeat soundtrack becoming a staple of internet meme culture, being a good show, and especially his arcade game series, Initial D has managed to maintain cultural relevance for decades. But like all good things, Initial D had to end in 2001 with the release of Third Stage. The series did technically keep going on past that and had three more stages officially ending in 2013, I just don't really think they're particularly good. The series switching from an underdog coming of age story to two rich kids parading around Japan with their dad's money to humiliate humble car hobbyists with their overkill team of mechanics as an endless series of who gives a fuck challenges come and go. But wait, I've already bitched about the Project D half of Initial D before. Isn't this supposed to be a video about MF Ghost, the sequel series? Well, after Initial D ended, the author Shuichi Shijino tried his hand at a few other stories. There's the high school girls baseball series Sailor Ace from 2015 to 2017, which was just an excuse to draw panty shots of high school girls, and there's 2014's Amazing Hannah, about a beautiful young woman falling in love with a middle-aged manga artist. Easily one of the sadder or more pathetic stories from a production standpoint. But nothing was quite hitting like Initial D was. Try as he may to find success doing other things he might have been more passionate about, it was clear his audience only wanted more race car bullshit. So he finally said fine, I'll do it. But it ain't gonna be good! He had mentioned in interviews back in 2016 that if he were to do a sequel series for Initial D, it will be about Rally, the coolest motorsport where the crowd is in more danger than the drivers and nobody is guaranteed to leave alive. The rally racing idea was cool, it's a dangerous motorsport just like street racing if street racing can reasonably be considered a motorsport and not a crime, and would open the door to a lot of intense and varied races we'd never seen before in Initial D. So we opted not to do that and instead came up with MF Ghost, a sequel series set in the year 2020X in a future where self-driving electric cars have overtaken traditional gasoline cars that you drive with your hands and feet like some sort of baby's toy. It follows a 19-year-old bastard child named Kanata Rivington, a student of Takami's coming from England to Japan to search for his absent father after his English mother's death by competing in MFG. MFG is a racing promotion formed by a mysterious rich benefactor named Ryo Takahashi, I wonder who he is, where they race on Toge Mountain Roads, but legally now. And the only rule is... Unified grip to weight ratio, which means heavier cars need to have bigger tires and lighter cars need to have thinner tires. Whoa! That changes everything! We're back to mountain roads, whoopee! I definitely wasn't about sick of those by the end of Initial D. The manga started in 2017, but in the last few months of 2023, we got the first 12 episode season of an anime series, and the reception to it was pretty warm. And that's a problem, because MF Go sucks and is so fundamentally bad on a level that, with all due respect, I don't think enough people really realize the extent to which this is both a terrible sequel to Initial D, but also just a terrible series in general. I really do love Initial D, so as pathetic as it is to say out loud, 
It really does make me concerned to see people praise this series so highly when they don't even realize how huge of a step down it is from Initial D. To give this series a full pass just because it has cars and Eurobeat in it is just sad. You deserve better than this, I know you don't think you do, but you actually deserve better than this. This isn't just Shuichi phoning it in, this is Shuichi tin can on a stringing it in. Part 1. Stuff that didn't make me wish that I was an MF ghost. I don't tend to like making wholly negative videos, I'd rather focus on stuff that doesn't piss me off, so to keep in the spirit of that, welcome to the Positivity Hour. Uh... Well, the CG cars look fine. And you know, it is cool that for both the sub and the dub, they got Takumi's voice actors back to be the narrator. As a result, high-powered sports cars have become an endangered species. I like that Kanata gets to have a British accent. Back at the academy, H pattern shifters with three pedals with the standard. The dub team behind Golden Wind were pussies for not giving them all Italian accents. I, I, I like hearing an accent. Wahoo, Bruno, I want to eat the biggest meatball in Italy, wahoo! But Giorno, wahoo, that's a spicy meatball, wahoo! Oh, and they also made the wise and smart decision to have Eurobeat during the race scenes. You know, I'm always saying it's weird when Initial D things don't have Eurobeat. So, I mean, thumbs up for that. I got my eye on you, Sun Kang. Don't do anything stupid. Part 2. Things were better before I was alive. We live in the future. In theory, this is supposed to be a good thing. My shoes should tie themselves, alleyways are supposed to be filled with cubes made of laser discs, and my car should be able to fly. The achievements of the past are supposed to build upon each other to lead us to ever-expanding heights. But this hasn't happened. I mean, I guess in some fields like medicine or technology, sure. But have you considered that cartoons suck now? And cars don't look as cool either. Yeah, I know they're safer and more fuel efficient and electric and cleaner and blah blah blah. Shut up. Look at this GTR skyline. Damn, that's clean. Ooh, FCRX7. Hold up, MR2? Supra? Hot damn. I'm not even much of a car guy and I know that when the lights pop up, shit goes down. I think it would be hard pressed to find someone who thinks a 2024 Toyota Corolla looks anywhere near as cool as a 1984 Toyota Corolla. I mean, maybe normal people care about like fuel economy and reliability, but that's probably a bit unfair to blame Shijino for the fact that modern cars just don't look as cool as they did in the 80s and 90s when he was making Initial D, but that is a big part of the magic of that original series. They were young people in affordable, moddable, and cool cars. Cars that looked cool drifting, cars that looked cool not drifting, cars that people dreamed of having but at the same time was not at all out of the question to actually have. A GT86 is by no means not a cool car, but it's not as cool. These affordable JDM cars of the 90s have resulted in a lot of death and destruction from young dumb street racers, so it's reasonable enough to kill off the culture Initial D was rooted in and crack down on the activity, but the cars featured in MF Ghost just don't really do anything for me. Now this is a highly subjective point, there are actually people out there who like expensive European sports cars, which is what a lot of the cars in MF Ghost are, so this isn't a problem for them. I guess I don't really have a counterpoint for that necessarily, I mean to each his own, but like I said a minute ago, Initial D caught on as well as it did because of the roster of cars and how the cars influenced the world building, the characters, and the vibe of young scrappy kids doing whatever they could with whatever they had. It didn't always make sense, like they all should have been hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt on replacement tires alone, but I think you get my point, they had relationships with their cars, it all felt very real and personal. If they crashed, that was a big deal, even attempted murderer Shingo shed tears when he crashed his EG6 after he tried to kill Takumi. I'm sure maybe one of the racers in MF Ghost has a really close connection to their Lamborghini that they only drive for this competition. It's not particularly relatable. You know, I had crackers for dinner, so. But the animation does do something for me. Make me confused and disappointed because it's it's lazy. The thing that specifically irks me so much about the non-race scenes is this. They use a lot of real photos to just be the backgrounds and environments. This one in the diner particularly grinds my gears, especially this guy 
who doesn't have a reflection so I guess there's just vampires in the world now. I guess this isn't the most uncommon thing in anime these days. Apparently Bochi the Rock does this, but it's a bit more stylized and harder to notice, at least in the screenshots that was sent on Twitter. And obviously the amazing world of Gumball does this, but it's, it's an obvious and major part of their art style, so it doesn't confuse and piss me off as much as MF Ghost does. I decided to check out the manga to see if this also happens there, because I had heard about the cars being traced before, and lo and behold, the manga does it too. So I guess the studio decided to adapt Shuichi's corner cutting into the art style itself. I know drawing is hard, I mean, look at my attempt at drawing a car, and the manga authors are on tight deadlines, and he's getting older. You can throw as many valid reasons for pissing into my soup as you want, but at the end of the day, there's still piss in it. In general, I don't know why the 90s anime style isn't emulated more often in modern day, like it looks timeless and full of soul. South Park has been using computers to fake handmade art style since 1997. I refuse to believe a studio couldn't just make something that looks like this again. Even beyond animation style, the soundtrack, not even the Eurobeat, the original soundtrack is also just so bare bones and lacking. First through third stage had like a hundred plus original tracks and quite a lot of them are bangers. Project D and MF Ghost default to so much boring and generic intense music. Meanwhile, first stage you got stuff like or for the shaky and stressful parts of the race or stuff like for the chill scenes or even stuff like for the somber moments. Uh, it's too 90s and cheesy sounding. Yeah, you would be scared of cheddar, you broke ass lactose intolerant bitch. Ultimately though, these are all just literally aesthetical complaints. There's actually far worse problems with MF Ghost. Part three, Honk Shoe. This show is boring. Look, I understand that getting literally just initial D but again would also be bad, but the plot of this show and the way it's executed doesn't excite me at all. From the plot outside the races to the races, there's just, there's no electricity. So I mentioned earlier that the plot is Kanata searching for his absent father, and he has two strategies. The first one is to just wander around the city with a picture he has of his parents and try to find where they took the picture. I guess the logic there is that Maybe his his dad is still standing there. The other strategy is to enter MFG under his dad's last name, Katagiri. MFG is super popular, so his dad might catch a race and see someone with his son's first name and his own last name, and then go, oh, f my son. But ultimately, this means that element of the plot is nothing. Like, have you tried, just, like, a phone book or Facebook? Japanese Facebook. The series takes place in modern day, if not at least 15 to 25 years in the future based on the abundance of self-driving electric cars. His dad can't be that hard to find if you really wanted to. They should have made the search room like really dark, you know why not? Have a half motorsport, half noir murder investigation. That would at least like be something. Have another one of the racers be the guy who killed him, I don't know. I guess you could make the argument that his father is a MF ghost in the sense that he did fuck Kanata's mom and then vanish like a ghost. Anyway, if Kanata isn't racing, then the show is him wandering around the city with Ren, the 17-year-old daughter of the family he's staying with. Ren has a huge crush on him, so every couple of episodes we get scenes of them walking around and not talking, while Ren is in her head like, Oh, Stimpy. Oh, he's the hottest guy ever. I love him so much because he's hot and drives a car like Vroom. So the first episode, I don't know, nothing happens. Then the second and third episode are just a time trial race. Way to start off with a bang. But is it at least exciting? No, not really. I mean, Kanata is completely emotionless behind the wheel, and him racing doesn't really mean anything to us. Like, the camera angles they choose to present the race make it basically just look like he's driving normally. Take the first corner in the Takami vs. KSK race. The camera sticks really close to the cars because that makes it feel faster. It's the same reason why you don't feel like you're going fast on the highway until you look out your side window. Things that are far feel slow, things that are close feel fast. I know some people will be quick to comment, I don't care about plots, just 
much in it for sweet races and euro beats. Muscle arm emoji. So I thought before we get too far into this, we ought to take a minute and look into the cinematography and composition of an MFG race and compare it to a peak initial D first stage race to illustrate why these suck so much ass. I'm gonna choose a personal favorite, Takami vs. Impact Blue, and well, I guess the only race in Season 1, Odawara Pikes Peak, or as they should have called it, Odawara Pikes Mid. We're gonna ignore the plot for now and just focus on shots of the cars and the racers. Impact Blue lasts from Act 18 to Act 19, and Odawara Peaks Mid lasts from Episode 4 to Episode 9, but if you want to count the qualifier run, it goes from Episode 1 to Episode 9. There are only 12 episodes, by the way. No, it absolutely does not justify being that long. Like I said earlier, in Initial D, the camera sticks close to the cars to make it feel faster, but possibly even more important than that is the way the camera moves with the cars to keep up the illusion of a much higher speed than they likely actually are going. There's also camera shake to keep in mind. It may seem like an odd thing to highlight, but it helps communicate the intense power of the cars. We're sticking as close to the action as possible. The majority of the commentary and what's going on comes from the drivers themselves, their point of view, their fears, and their hand movements and their leg movements. Sometimes they do just have a stationary camera, but only sometimes. Generally, the races feel very dynamic and electric, the sideline characters will cut in like a comic book, their exclamations are quick and snappy, or introduce an idea that we likely haven't considered yet. The races taking place at night also make it feel much more exciting because of the worst visibility. Then there's MFG. The majority of the time the camera stays still and lets the cars approach and then pass it or the camera is the drone's perspective so the car just stays mostly center frame, or the cars will pass by and then pan up, usually cutting us away from the action to focus on some bullshit with the MFG angels or Agata or the commentators or slowly pan as the car passes. The choice of soundtrack is also very important, from both the Eurobeat and the original score. The Project D half of Initial D also commits to sin. Because the plot is so non-existent, the races have to be stretched out as far as they possibly can, and they can't make them this exciting. The soundtrack has to be this, and the shots have to be this, while Kenta has to have some shit explained to him, which actually happens in both series. This dumbass hasn't learned anything. To be fair, MFG does have some dynamic angles and shots, but is much more rare than it was 24 years prior. MFG is supposed to be a more reasonable and realistic racing series, more technical and restrained for the smarter racing and car enthusiasts than Initial D was. But it's also a cartoon. You can do whatever you want, you can put the camera anywhere, you can present things in the most engaging and visually interesting way ever. Your predecessors literally showed you how to do this in 1998. So like, what's the meaning of this? Also, the fact that it's a cartoon inherently makes it a lot less interesting when you present it like this. If these were real racers, it would be insane that a Toyota GT86 is keeping up with Lamborghinis and Porsches. But it's not, it's a cartoon, so I know the only reason they're keeping up is just because of plot armor bullshit. And that's especially frustrating if you don't have- if it's, if it's not presented in an entertaining way. I know Redline is probably a bad example to point to when we're talking about an anime that was apparently so low budget they had to use photographs as backgrounds, but it is a perfect example of conveying speed, just violent f***ing speed, taking advantage of the medium and having fun with it. Now we're gonna go back to Initial D again and look at the races from a plot perspective for the way they build up races to make something that looks like this feel intense and important. Let's take just the Kansai Drift scene, analyze how it's built up to in the first episode, and then why the execution makes it as memorable as it is, and why there's not a scene in MF Ghost that gets even close to it. First, you've got Takami. He's aloof, quiet, unassuming, screams like hell in Ikatani's car while he's drifting, and doesn't particularly care about cars but all his friends are super into them and the local street racing scene. He goes up on the mountain to hang out with them and we meet the Takahashi brothers. They're arrogant and imposing, challenging the local drivers because they know they're better, and they are. They are explicitly on a warpath to conquer every course in the prefecture, leave records the locals will never beat, and retire as undisputed legends with a trail of humiliated locals in their wake. Just before that plan is explained to us, however, we get to hear a phone call between Yuichi and Bunta, where Bunta reveals that he wasn't driving the 8-6 we saw at the beginning of the episode. 
his son Takumi was. Takumi, the character we've seen completely apathetic to cars and screaming in the back seat of a street racer's car. A few hours pass and Keisuke begins making his way home when suddenly, a car begins to catch up to him. Panic sets in as he's not used to actually having competition on the road. The music kicks in and the camera sticks to close up and intense angles. Now Keisuke is mad and begins to take this seriously. As opposed to Ikatani's sloppy drifts we saw earlier as Takumi screamed in the back seat, we can immediately tell the mass massive gap in skill between Keisuke and Ikatani, the best driver on the Speed Stars apparently. Keisuke's drifts are clean and fast and this 8-6 that we now know as Takumi is sticking to him like glue, matching each and every one of his drifts in a car that shouldn't be able to do that with a driver who shouldn't be able to do that. Even if you're not a car guy who just knows that an FDRX7 is supposed to be better than an AE86, the beginning of the episode sets up that 8-6s are old shitboxes with the conversation Isuke and Takumi have about not even being able to afford one, i.e. damn, we can't even afford a piece of junk like that. Plus, the Takahashi brothers' imposing status implies that they would just have better, sleeker, and faster cars. And of course, during the Kansai drift scene, Keisuke has plenty of, you're kidding me, and there's no way my RX-7 can't shake an old 8.6. His confidence and demeanor is shaken, he's shown up, and even though nobody else sees it, he's humiliated by an old 8.6 performing maneuver even he can't do. And now, Keisuke and by extension the Red Sun sights have been set on our little clueless protagonist, a protagonist who we're also wondering, how the hell is he capable of this? Has he been lying to his friends? What's going on? In one episode, they set up intrigue, stakes, and excitement. It's one of the most memorable scenes in anime history, not just because it's cool to look at, but it's cool because the whole episode is built up to it and the consequences it'll have on the rest of the series. Kanata just being another quiet and reserved guy, Atakami 2, doesn't work here because he doesn't have a supporting cast of characters pushing him to do wild and crazy things nor does he personally have much of a reason to do wild and crazy things. And anytime he does anything cool, it's just an excuse for an initial D cameo character to chime in and say, this reminds me of Takumi Fujiwara, Kanata's teacher. And then all the initial D fanboys soy face and rate the series highly because they remembered initial D. I think it really speaks volumes to how good MF Ghost is that so many people's favorite scene in the season was a two second flashback to Initial D, and the thing viewers want the most is a Takami cameo. Why MF Ghost would be legendary? Yeah, it'll be legendary for a two second flashback to Initial D. That, that's why this show, MF Ghost, will be legendary. Because of this scene, a flashback to the show you actually like. If seeing the 8-6 drift for two seconds made you tear up, just watch Initial D. It's- that- that car is in every episode. Initially still exists, you can still watch it. It's actually fucking hilarious, like I'm not even joking here. Literally the most popular scene from MF Ghost so far has just been two seconds of Initial D. A gif. I could end the video right here. MF Ghost fans blown the fuck up with facts and logic. Kanata is inherently a less interesting character because he's been to racing school his whole life. He's already an extremely accomplished racer, so there's never really any excitement when he races because we know he's a genius and that genius will be shown to us in the most who gives a shit fashion possible. There are times when people radio him while he's driving to say, hey, keep an eye on your tires, this next section requires a lot of braking or something. Only for Kanata to say, don't worry, they drilled tire management into us at the academy so my tires are always fine. Like, thanks. I was worried the protagonist might have an obstacle to overcome, I'm glad he has no weaknesses. Takumi was entertaining to watch because his immense talent was slowly revealed to us and the other characters. We didn't know his strengths or weaknesses from the beginning, and he had interesting motivations to race that tied into his personal life and relationships. Takumi gets boring by the time we get to Project D and he can teleport and memorize every course immediately and never loses, but it takes quite a while to get there. Kanata is just that from the very beginning. Kanata just isn't cool to watch, he doesn't want anything enough, right out of the gate he has all the skills to be a successful professional racer for the rest of his life and that's exactly what he's going to do and it doesn't even particularly make him excited. He's not interesting at all. His plot outside of the driver's seat doesn't influence his plot inside the driver's seat. If the only purpose of him being an MFG is to have his name broadcast on TV so his dad might notice, 
it doesn't matter if he wins, he just has to continue to qualify for the next race. I understand that in real racing, it's nothing to be ashamed of to come in 5th or 8th or whatever, and there's a lot more opponents and factors in a big realistic race, but I'm a dumb stupid guy, and if you're not first, you're last. If you've got a character who's not just guaranteed to win because he's the main character, but he's guaranteed to win because the parameters of winning aren't that high stakes and are well within the incredible skill set he's been given in his off-screen backstory, then it isn't interesting to watch. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he can get at least within 15th place. Like, all you'd have to do is make him really want to win, then holy shit, we've got character traits and stakes. Take Gun Coma from Shuichi's first series, Bari Bari Densetsu, which I also made a video on. Even if he finished that race second, third, fourth, whatever, he'd still probably get sponsorships and enter the pro circuit, but that's not hype. Hype is throwing a saxophone into the soundtrack and having the main character come in first. Hype is something unexpected happening during the race. Hype is learning about our characters while they race. Not just how they drive, but how they're driven. Rocky isn't a good movie because it's a boxing movie. It's a good movie because Rocky is an endearing character. Spoiler alert for a 50 year old movie, but Rocky actually loses the fight, but it's still a beautiful tear jerking ending because the character was written well enough and had clearly defined goals that were met by the finale. He didn't expect to win, all he wanted to do was show everyone that he's good, and he did that. Therefore, an incredible ending. Sylvester Stallone is literally a fucking Italian and he wrote a better protagonist. Kanata doesn't have to win, forget what I said earlier. As long as the races mean something to him, even if it's just to prove himself, you can make that into a powerful story. They just didn't. When it comes to MF Ghost, they're bad races both narratively and cinematically. Part 4. What the fuck? Being boring and ugly sucks, but at the end of the day, fifth and final stage were also boring and ugly. What really pushes MF Ghost into the fuck you zone is the part that everyone else who has seen this show is well aware of and has been waiting for me to address. The MFG Angels. Now look, I'm not a prude or anything, I don't necessarily have anything against egregious and obscene fan service. Now, I mean, I do, it makes me not want to watch the show while other people are in the house at the risk I'll be accused of zerking off, off to whatever I'm watching. The MFG Angels are more or less a side hustle of the racing promotion where they attract bonus viewers to ogle at the scantily clad females as the cameraman shoves his camera, like, right up in their asses. And I think they also perform songs, but I'm almost certain this never happens in the anime. Where the MFG Angels cross the line from being just something kind of weird into being the second worst thing in the show is Ren, the 17 year old girl with a crush on Canada I mentioned earlier. She is an MFG angel. She's 17. Shijino decided to make her 17 and have her employed at a job where she is explicitly sexualized for the express purpose of having people sexualize her. This is both creepy and weird from the perspective of the author having written this into his story, but now in universe it opens up an ass load of questions. Why are her parents okay with this? Why would Ryosuke and upper management be okay with this? Why is society, a society where the legal age of adulthood is 18 by the way, be okay with this? And most baffling of all, why is Ren okay with this? In every scene of Ren doing her job, she is typically extremely embarrassed, reluctant, and shocked to learn what is required of her at this job. Ignoring the moral and ethical nightmare of hiring a minor to be a sexual object, at no point does it make any sense why she has even chosen this line of work. She is not interested in cars or racing, and she feels rightfully demeaned and objectified by her role every step of the way. It just- it makes no sense. To make it even more troublesome, at one point she states that she thought the job was just singing and dancing and had no idea about all the other stuff, which implies that the MFG organization basically hired her under false pretenses. They must not have told her that the job entailed having your ass blasted across the screens of 30 million viewers. If they had, she would have known before it was about to happen to her. And she must have also somehow not known this either, despite MFG being extremely popular and already existing for years now. It's actually kind of impressive how just about every plot detail of the series just gets torn to shreds if you just look into it like a little bit. You know, you could have just wrote the story to make her 18, then it would have just been cringy instead of criminal. I have a fan theory that Initial D was actually written by Keiichi Sushia. Who do we think is the worst parent in this franchise? 
Bunta for allowing and encouraging his son to do dangerous illegal street racing, or Ren's parents for enthusiastically allowing their 17-year-old daughter to be half-naked on worldwide television for 30 million viewers. Comment down below! Initial D had a little bit of fan service too. Mako and Sayuki were not allowed to just be skilled racers who happened to be female, they were also shown naked a handful of times. You know, please ignore all the jokes I made in previous videos about jacking my shit off stupid style to these scenes, I'm being woke right now. But at least those were in bonus episodes where you wouldn't really miss much by skipping them. The manga had a lot more perversion in it than the anime did between Natsuki panty shots or fantasy sequences, but at least those characters were all over 18. Takami's 17 year old girlfriend Mika caught some fan service strays, but as far as egregiousness goes, we made it through relatively unscathed. The angels are in every episode. Granted, most of them are presumably over the age of 18, but it still feels like jangling keys in front of the cum-brained audience's faces because there's really, like, nothing else to make them excited in this series. Race queens are a real thing in Japanese race culture, but the outfits are a bit more conservative than the angels outfits. That's fucking insane. But I said the angels were the second worst thing about MF Ghost. The absolute worst thing about MF Ghost is also related to the age of 17. Kyoki Sawatari. This is where Sawatari lives. I grew miters! Kyoki is another MFG racer whose defining character trait is that he is sexually obsessed with 17 year old girls. Datte, 17 janaika. We can at least take solace in the fact that other characters call him a freak bitch, so I guess Shijino does know that this is wrong, which only begs the question of why he decided to make Ren 17 in the first place, or even better, why he decided to write this character in the first place. Overall, I think people are way too forgiving with anime and manga creating and sexualizing underage characters. It's not cultural differences. Before April of 2022, the legal age of adulthood in Japan was 20 years old. They're a super conservative country. They censor their porn. I'm not going to act like I'm an authority on Japan's cultural relationship with sexuality, morality, and pornography, but all I'm saying is, we're Americans. We need to stop acting like we can't just tell Japan to start acting right. We have persuasion and reason on our side conclusion. It's just sad. I wasn't a fan of the Project D half of Initial D anyway, I thought 5th and Final Stage were also pretty rough, but MF Ghost is just in a league of its own. I can't even believe that these were written by the same person, like I don't know how we got to the point where the plot is barely existent, the main character has no initiative, nothing happens ever, everything at every step of the way is so lazy, so poorly thought out, so fuck it, and if they're not gonna give a shit, I don't know why we should either. I know Shijino's been in poor health over the last few years, even putting MF Ghost on a hiatus a few times, and that's unfortunate. I can only hope he's not making this series because he financially has to to stay afloat. And if that is the case, he might be the worst businessman of all time. But at the end of the day, all that matters to most people is the art. And this art is more like fart. Because it stinks. You know, it's like all those direct-to-DVD Bruce Willis movies like, yeah, now we know why he did it. Th that doesn't mean they made good movies, you know? I will not be watching season 2 of MF Ghost. I don't even know why this series even exists, let alone why it has such high ratings. You shouldn't be okay with this. Y you really do deserve better. Am I just a stubborn old man yelling at clouds ready to be taken away in a straitjacket screaming about how it was better when the race scenes looked like a commercial for the general car insurance and in reality MF Ghost is a modern classic? Only history can tell me that. Either I'll be remembered as the one who is brave enough to say it, or the one who was foolish enough to. Even if we take away all the, ahem, <clears throat> problematic elements, we're still left with a really boring story about a bunch of characters I don't care about presented in a lazy, ugly, and boring way. In 12 episodes, nothing has caught my attention in the way Initial D was able to in just one. MF Ghost sucks. Watch that new TED show instead. I'm out.
Let's get some pussy tonight.